Let's see if this is working. Is this a working? Thanks for highlighting the Ontario election yesterday. It worked. Owen was able to swing the whole province. No, it wasn't me, but I definitely wanted to highlight it. Uh, the Liberals lost so badly, they no longer have official party status. Unbearable. So that's awesome. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> As you can see, I am outside on a porch. Because this, <laughs> Walter. Yo, could, uh, love, can you bring Walter? He's wearing a hilarious hat. Buddy, come on out of here. Say hi. Look at look at Wally's hat. Is that your dolphin? Come here. Come here. Dolphin. <laughs> okay, so he's got a great hat. And sh show this, right? See, there's you. Say hi. Say, say hi with your dolphin. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you like your hat? Are you excited to go have breakfast with Mama and Dada? Breakfast. Bra breakfast with Mama and Dada. You want me to wear this hat? What do you think? Is it good? Do I look like Do I look like uh, someone with a pituitary gland problem who's who's out to <laughs> who's out to fix a light bulb? Here you go, buddy. Go say hi to your mama. <laughs> Bye, fixer. All right, so as you can see, I'm on a porch because uh, it's probably the quietest place. But it's uh, it's always good to have a have someone come by and say hello. I I've been uploading a bunch of comedy clips, and I noticed something really cool. I, I in the comment section, people seem to be a bit uh, hopeful these days, which is awesome because people can get depressed and sad, and they feel like uh. Our culture is getting completely white, but I saw in the comment section, when, when you see, it's one thing to see some random crazy guy like me talking into a webcam, and it's another when you see it in a giant theater, and you see how many people relate, and I think that's one thing that's given me confidence over the years to continue, is not only do I know it's right, I know how many people relate because of my extensive career in, in stand-up comedy. And some people don't get to see that. So here's uh, a clip I just put up the other day that I'd like to share with you. And I know I'm early today because I'm leaving my family for a month and I really want to have breakfast with them. So I'm going to do a half hour here and then I'm going to go. And that's for real today because I am going to miss the absolute hell out of them. So, oh, real quick though, here's uh, the latest, not the latest, but here's Whitney Cummings. A map of shootings in Sandy Hook. Stay angry. I think that looks a lot more like herpes. I think that that map uh, triggered her on a different level. I don't think it has anything to do with shootings because it's obviously manipulated. Uh, but it looks like a herpetic outbreak. So there's that. Uh, this is infuriating, but hilarious. If you if you look at it as a as a joke. It's really not that infuriating. It says conservative war on comedy is total BS. Basically not saying that there's that the conservative war on comedy is BS, like that it doesn't exist because it doesn't. Vice magazine is stop apologizing when conservatives throw a tantrum over jokes. Okay, every single late night comedy host, every single one of them is on the left. Every single Netflix special, with the exception of maybe Joey Diaz and uh Rogan and some issues, but they're all on the left. Every single sitcom on the left. They thought that Roseanne was super right wing. Roseanne is a pro choice Obama supporter. Like, just because she liked Trump over Hillary, they called her like too right wing. It's a joke. There is no conservative war in comedy. The liberals dominate comedy to a mono uh, 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 They have such a monopoly on comedy that I've had to perform at wood shops and this bitch can't follow me and everyone knows it this made me laugh uh black pride is a movement encouraging black people to take uh, pride in being black gay pride is a positive stance against discrimination asian pride is a positive stance to being asian white pride slogan primarily used by white supremacists white nationalists neo-nazis and blah, 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 blah. 
I wonder, and then I was uh, arguing with somebody about that. And someone was like, well, it's because it's the majority population. So if white people move to China, can you have white pride? Can you have a white pride flag? If you live in China, like let's say there's a uh, population of white people living in China where the majority is Chinese and they're by far the most powerful and richest. Can you now have white pride? And they'd be like, no, because historically, ah, you're all just liars. You're a bunch of lying postmodernist losers. Such liars. I saw this. This may, um, Okay, acid attacks against women all over the world. This is from the New York Times, by the way. Over the world, but most uh, common in Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Uganda, according to the Acid Survivors Trust International. Colombia remains the only South American country where such assaults happen routinely. More than 100 attacks are reported each year, nearly two a week. Many go unreported. There's no mention of the cause, which is Islam. That's what I don't understand about... Well, I do understand it. Obviously, I understand it, why they're doing it. But it's, 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 it's dark comedy to, 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 to see how much they, they leave out and exactly why. Oh, we don't know why these acid attacks just keep happening in these, in these weird countries. It's because of Islam. And that's why. That's how I felt in uh, my hospital bed when Amy was in there. It's just a picture of a giant dog and a little dog. Ah, you just have that, that one's a visual for you audio listeners. Why didn't they laugh? Is the uh, podcast that gets vastly more downloads than than the video version. So I'm trying to uh, accommodate the audio people. And, and shout out to Bayonet Bob, who's still our, our audio master. Um, so I'm just trying to accommodate for people that can't see anything. But whatever. I just took off my glasses so that I can be one of you. Oh, that's a Trudeau joke. All right. So here, I did a song for Crowder Show yesterday, and I want to play it for you guys because you guys wrote a lot of it. I, I asked you guys uh, to help me out with any ideas, and in the comments section, somebody came up with the American Pie uh, parody to a, a Miss America's Thighs. And so I kind of ran with it from there. But some great lines out of you guys. This was a full-blown team effort. So this was... I, I'm not going to upload it on my channel yet. I, I usually let Crowder have a few days with it to to percolate if he wants to. Doesn't matter to me, but I just try to do that as a, as a, a, a good move. But on the live stream, I'll show you guys. This is uh, America's Thighs, written by The Unbearables. All right, where is it? Here we go. A long, long time ago, I can still remember when contestants used to wave and smile. But I knew if feminists had their way, they would make the whole thing gay. And Miss America would be a trans queer fatty named Kyle. The news cycle filled me with dread With every blog post that I read Beauty is now seen as unfair It's all about acne and green hair I can't imagine what they meant when they Said there'd be no swimsuit event They said that it was cause it was obscene but we all know it was to hide the tranny's wings. So bye bye, Miss America's thighs. Drove my Prius with no weenus, singing me to or die. And the gender studies boys were drinking soy and cried. Gender roles are a patriarchal lie. They scream, gender roles are a. All right, you get it. Good times. That was a fun one. So thanks to the, the people that, that helped with those lines because I was on a pretty tight crunch. And uh, write, writing songs really quick is not always easy. And I, I try to do that one without, without looking at the words because sometimes when I do the Crowder songs, I get annoyed at myself when I see myself reading words. So there's a couple stammers, but it's all good. They were doing... Uh, 
uh, cultural appropriation week, and this and this week was the Jews. The Jews. All right. So here is. Oh, and by the way, uh, new special at uh, Reluctant Warlord at HugePianist.com. And if you're running low on dough, let, just email me. Let me know. I'll give you a promo code. This one isn't really. Uh, I'm going to release it on YouTube eventually anyway. If you want to buy it, great. That's huge. But if not, let me know. I'd rather, I, I want to spread it around. I'm just trying to have some sort of looking business sense, but I'm not always great at that. Uh, truck my ad, set your son to a bunch of people really funny. Thank you. Democracy bear, pride is a deadly sin. That's the one I've always had. Uh, I've, I, I, I see, I see both. There has to be another word in the chat. I'm sure someone will come up with it. A lot of you guys have done a lot of work on this. What is, uh, what's the good version of pride? Anthony Bourdain died of suicide? No. Is that real? Oh, man, that's brutal. I'm going to look that up after. Man, that's, he hung himself. Why? Why? Yeah, that's, that's, that's awful. All right, well. That, that's I really really like that guy. That's that's absolutely brutal. Oof. All right, all right, kids, don't do that. It's uh, sends shockwaves around the world. It's horrifying. Billy, haven't kept up with your channel much since your original Twitter YouTube ban. Glad to see you back on YouTube. Going to start watching again every day. Thanks, Billy. Man, much love, Anthony Bourdain. Uh, all right. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna keep rocking and rolling here. But that's that's a brutal that's brutal news. I've never met the guy, but for people that knew him, uh, I've heard he was just a fantastic human being. Linder, we have hope because the Bears showed the world what it's like to stick together, and we uh, persevered. We are still here, and we're getting stronger. Integrity is more contagious than lies. Bless you all. Thanks, Pinder. I agree, buddy. A few of my favorite '40s pianists, I think you like Duke Ellington, Frankie Carr. Carl? I don't know Frankie Carl. I know Duke. Earl Hines. Fats Waller. I love Fats Waller. Jelly Roll Morton. I don't know Jelly Roll Morton. Fats Waller is great, though. Uh, Steve Burns' dad got me into Fats Waller. Um, yeah, that's. I can't stop thinking about Bourdain. All right, well, anyway, here is, uh, here is a joke about Justin Trudeau. Let's see here. Another time he was trying to say that uh, a pronoun, a preferred pronoun that you can just make up, like zins, or zim, zur. You can make up a word and people have to call you that legally. So I, my dad's a, a persuasion, public speech professor. You know, one of the few things taught at colleges these days that are actually, is actually a very valuable skill. So he taught me how to form a good argument and see the Achilles heel in other people's argument. You know, Socratic method, all that dope shit, you know? And, Hi, uh, and so I tweeted, hey, tagging him always. I tweeted, hey, and I, you know, I had 120,000 followers with that check, so I know he fucking saw it. And I said, hey, Justin Trudeau, my preferred pronoun is Justin Trudeau is a faggot. Because the joke being, the faggots already hate speech, so that's illegal, right? So he legally has to commit a crime. If I say my preferred pronoun is a word that's already illegal, that's called a catch-22, my friend. If my pronoun is just as you a faggot, you gotta say it or you don't. Either way, it's illegal, you bitch. That's, those are the things that will get you kicked off Twitter. Permanently, I'm banned for life. Not ISIS, they're still there. <laughs> Imagine being in ISIS with dyslexia. You think you're in sissy. Right, those are the type of jokes I bring to the stage. 
Dyslexic ice is a sissy. Oh, my little man's trying to get out here. Ah, you want? I'm glad that joke ended because there was some naughty words in it. Hey, buddy. You want to come out here and say hi again? But uh, yeah, that's uh, like that. That's the thing is uh, I kept getting in trouble on Twitter because people intentionally weren't getting the joke. What are you doing, little man? All right, let's read a couple more super chats because I'm not going to play the next clip yet because I have a little man and I try not to swear around him. My twin and I are celebrating our birthday. Oh, this is Bunny Bear. Uh, my twin and I are celebrating my birthday today. I almost, I am almost to her home. I'm listening to this driving through your home state, Bear for Life. I love it. I love it. Enjoy. Thanks, dude, from Abyssmall. Oh, anytime. I don't know what that's for. Hey, you headbutt me. I formally announced my candidacy for the 2019 Miss America pageant. Uh, men do it better. That's hilarious. Hey, buddy. Come here. Say hi to the people again. Hi, I, people. Yeah. And I thought about this a lot. Someone gave me great advice. They said, don't, don't point at a screen and say people to your kid. I get that. But at the same time, this is the world he's going to live in. And uh, he doesn't watch a lot of TV. And he doesn't. He's not going to have an iPhone. He's going to play with ropes and knots and uh, and rocks. You like rocks? Rocks. You like big rocks? Big rocks. But, I mean, this is daddy's job, you know? And I'm in the new house, I'm moving my grand piano into uh, the living room because I want him to want to play it. I want you to play it. And he got bit by a dog. He got bit by a dog. Remember the dog bit you? Dog yeah, yeah. And he handled it like a champion. You handled it so good. Yeah. See? Yeah, Max. Max bit you, so Max is getting put down. Hello. Max. Max. Yeah, it was right here. Remember the owie? Mama. Went owie. Mama. Yeah. Where is Max. it? Yeah. I didn't mean to bring up such a such a Max. such a bad memory, but Max. let's talk more about uh, water. What do you like better, water or milk? Mm. Milk's better. Well, what about the what about the milk? This is milk. That's water. <laughs> Do you know, uh, how do you describe coffee? What's the word? What's the adjective to describe coffee? What's coffee? Black. But what is it though? It's black it's it, oh, it's black coffee. That's a good adjective. What else is it? Black. It's it's hot. Hot coffee. Hot, hot coffee. Hot coffee. It's hot black coffee. Black coffee. Mm, you're so black. you're a smart boy. That's a sweet shirt, buddy. Your shirt looks a little like mine. That's a sweet hat, but this is the thing. If you're going to do tree work in this hat, you need to get a real one because this one, my brother will say, headache, and that means that there's a branch coming down, and this one doesn't seem very strong. But, oh, what color is this hat? Yellow. Yellow. What else is yellow? Yellow hat. Yellow hat. Yellow hat. Yellow hat. Go, uh, go show your mom the yellow hat. And then we're going to go have breakfast. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Oh, you want to jump real quick? You want to do the, the thing? Ready? <laughs> he does the thing where we go. <laughs> I don't think he's going to do it right now. But he gets more tuta. Oh, we'll do tuta as soon as daddy's done. I love you. Give daddy a kiss. Give daddy a kiss. Go see your mom. I love you, buddy. All right, now, don't forget, yeah, don't forget your milk and your water. That's water, ah, and that's milk. Oh, I know what democracy bear meant. <laughs> Here you go. Because we were talking about um, pride and how pride's a sin. We we're talking about black pride, Asian pride, gay pride. Very good point, democracy bear, because I don't have white pride. I think pride in what you accomplish is the is is okay but i think that's just called accomplishments i think pride is a sin when it's just when it's unearned i think it, pride is always a sin apparently but like let's say you 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 do some craft that's really good and you look at that and you're like you look at it with that that i know what's good and evil and i know that feeling isn't evil where you look at it and you're like i made that and then you could say, well, it's all in honor of God. And that's like why Bach was so good is because it was all just to honor God. Like the well-tempered Kavir was his, 
you know, gift. And that's one reason why he was so incredible. But at the same time, there's, it's just, it's a natural human feeling to do something cool. Like you cut down a tree with your brother and you look at the stump and you go, yeah, whatever that's called. I, I don't think that's the same as racial or gay pride. Like, how do you have gay pride where you're like, I'm so proud of the fact that my wiener just wants to, you, you know where I'm going with that. All right. I think it's more maybe pride equals being cocky. Yeah, or undeserved. I started a Twitter account to follow Owen. If any bears want to network here in the South, I'm Barracus Maximus. Literally no other reason to use it. <laughs> I, take, I appreciate that. So that's Barracus, B-E-A-R-I-C-U-S, Maximus, M-A-X-I-M-U-S. Cowboy here, check the bear phone about Wisconsin venue. I will when I get back. Uh, bear phone's dead right now. But, um, oh, I got to talk about that. All right. Just because, let me know if you, oh, thank you, uh, No Dak Bear. If you need help with anything for the potential Fargo show, God bless. I tried to say hi to Owen, but Justin Trudeau is a, is a faggot. Just what, the only time I censor myself is around like my kid or if, or if I'm like in the company of people that I want, I choose to censor, by the way. Because you will see me censor myself, but that's not the state. But Justin Trudeau is a faggot. Just walked right by and ignored me. Hashtag me. Uh, mod me to wrench life. I'll mod you, Coder Bear. I trust you, Coder Bear. I trust Coder Bear tremendously. He he made the uh, Unbearable's app, Unbearable, Unbearable's app dot com. I for, uh, sweet. So we're looking at my cross country adventure that I'm doing in a month, and I'm also kind of feeling Denver because we just called a bunch of places in Fargo, and they're pretty expensive to rent. Like one was like five grand, so that would mean I'd have to sell just an ungodly amount of tickets to make that not a loss and this close to the date i don't know if that's possible so i was looking at bismarck and i was also now looking at denver because i get a lot of people asking me to come to denver and um and so if i do like detroit denver boise because boise's locked i'm doing boise in, in the middle of july and so i'm trying to get a couple more on the way uh, oh, here's Coder Bear. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll mod you, buddy. I'll mod you, Cody. Cody Bear. Mod life, yo. Add moderator. There you go. You got yourself a wrench, Coder. Oh, George. Thank you, buddy. As long as you're proud, you ca you cannot know God. A proud man is always looking down on things and people. Uh, and of course, as long as you're looking down, you cannot see something that is above you. C.S. Lewis. That's incredible. I think that implies a judgment. This is what I'm talking about. This feeling. It isn't like pride. Like, listen, I, don't get me wrong. I, I, I experienced that in this chat. I did what you just described. And that was when I said Whitney or was it Whitney Cummings? No, it was Michelle Wolf couldn't follow me. I feel that way when I feel um, attacked. When I feel like somebody's coming at me, that's when I get all uh, Muhammad Ali on people. But that's not my natural instinct. What is that? Is that money? Oh, your eighth Jew. Thank you, buddy. His eighth Jew kicked in. No, don't repeat what I just said. It's not bad, but it's just, you know what I'm saying. Give daddy a high five. Yeah, boom. So, uh, my feeling that I don't think is bad. I get what you're saying, George. When you look down at people, when you're when you look down at people, you can't look up. And uh, Jordan uh, Jordan Peterson, I don't know who said it. It might have been C.S. Lewis was talking about how sometimes you people miss God because they don't look low enough. Where not low is in like hell. Low is in like God can be in a dishwasher or hi. And uh, I'm talking about the accomplishment, I think, is the feeling I'm, I'm, I'm describing. And I think pride kicks in when there's some sort of conflict. Hi. It might, hi. It still might not be good. I, I probably shouldn't say stuff like Michelle Wolf couldn't follow me. Hi. 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 But it's true. But like, but false modesty, I think, is, is pretty gross, too, though. I don't know. It's a bare life, homie. Thanks, Trevor. Uh, Raven, I've always saw... 
Pride is not being able to seek help and believing you're infallible. You're talking about accomplishment. If you swing out west, do a show in New Mexico. I'd love to do a show in New Mexico. So email me. Why don't they laugh at gmail.com? Comment under here because that's actually easier. Because ever since those, those bastards started spamming me, my email isn't uh, great. Would love to have you come to St. St. Louis. Oh, I've loved, I love doing St. Louis. I've done helium before there. It's great. Those bastards. God gives you the accomplishment. Right, but what about the feeling of having that pass through you, though? See, that's a level of humility that I don't think I can possibly have as a, like at doing what I do. I think that maybe. I'm not going to say no. But, but it's like comedians are almost like rappers or cage fighters. It's like I don't really know how I could be that humble where I say like what I – like every laugh is God passing through me. Like I, because then if someone attacks me, I don't know. Maybe, there, maybe there's something there. There's like a there, – there, that would be a level of enlightenment that I don't currently possess where, you, where then your response, that quick and, and – because too much viciousness is a loss in comedy. I've learned that compassion works great, and then you execute, though. You have to be able to execute. It's really intense. All right, Bible says pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. It doesn't say that pride is bad. It warns that the proud will be destroyed. Right. Pro, pro, uh, pride cometh before the fall, right? Is that the exact line? Or? It's destruction? I always thought it was pride cometh before the fall. Oh, we need another... It's time. Oh, I know we need another. It's time. My bad. Sorry. I just had a um, a cross country move, uh, releasing a special, uh, buying a house. My wife in a hospital. You know, my bad. I should also do more. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking around. But seriously, though, God was created to keep people from stealing from one another. I don't believe that at all, Nicholas. Think about all the things that were created to keep people from stealing from another one another, and how many of them have gone away. And, and it's the perseverance of the one. I'm not going to get too religious. I have no time. I'm just going to play you guys one more thing because it's literally the title. It's about Google. All right, so check this out. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here's a funny one. Just real quick. Hang on. Uh, did I not put it in the queue? Pride, acid, dog, Trudeau, Miss America. Oh, here it is. This is Google. And I think there's a certain type of song that always goes with those tech commercials. It's always supposed to sound uplifting, even if it's just crazy shit. It goes like this, it goes.
the brand new Mercedes Me Too. The car is so smooth, he swore she said yes. And no one will suspect him because he donates to the Clintons. All right. So, we have hope. Because, uh, all right. So, I got to go. Hugepianist.com for the new special, Reluctant Warlord. If you're running low on cash, not a problem. Email me, why didn't they laugh at gmail.com, or comment here, and I will send you a, a code. Um, yeah, and you know, it, if you're here and you're hanging and you're a good dude and it's all good, um, I'd rather just have you watch it than not watch it. Cause, uh, and also I want to, uh, I want to know where I should perform. So right now, Denver, Detroit are big ones. Bismarck would be great. Same with, uh, Fargo, but this close to the date, I'm looking at some serious, uh, inefficiencies. Montana, maybe? I don't know. I just did Minneapolis. But that looks like a good spot, but at the same time, all right, whatever. So hit the like button, share it. This is, I know this is a very, very short one, but I'm about to go have a great uh, breakfast with my family because I will not see them for a month. I, in that month, I will edit my book. I will release my book. Please buy my book. Because I want to beat Trevor Noah in the charts. And that is not a pride thing. That is about... Cultural victory. Because we can win this thing. You know, leftism is um, is a fickle bitch. It's not really strong. It just requires minimal balls and a little bit of flag planting. And my wife watched yesterday's streams and stream, and she said that her favorite part was when I talked about how um, I've done their world, but they haven't done mine. Like, there's two worlds happening simultaneously in America. There's people that look at this, and they believe it, and they say, yeah, the conservatives are silencing comedy, and there's people that don't. There's people that see um, a 25-week partial birth abortion as a woman's right that don't even think of, of what that means, of just that that's absolute, unequivocal murder. Because whether or not you... you Listen, I believe life starts at conception personally, and I think that's true. And I think that I've never heard a argument against that, that that's valid. But if at a point when the child could survive outside the mother, cracking the skull and sucking it out with a vacuum, the people that believe that don't think at all. They're zebras. They just they go with power. They don't go with truth. They literally just I don't know, just chewing just chewing grass, trying to stay in a pack so no one identifies them, and one of their buddy gets taken out by a lion, they don't even blink. They're like, not me, more grass. <laughs> They're just consumers. And, uh, and there's those people, and then there's the lions, the ones that have to actually hunt and, and think about, you know, uh, how to accomplish something, task-oriented people. Where it's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll creep up. I won't make any noise. And then I'll take one. You know, it's just my buddy, uh, Kevin Lilly, who's now like literally the most successful trainer in all of Hollywood. Still like one of my best friends. I was talking with him yesterday all like a ton. Uh, came up with lions and zebras. That was his th way of, of describing people. He'd say someone's a lion or someone's a zebra. And from day one, when I started training with him, we just bonded so hard because a lot of times like lions don't don't get to see other lions very often. It's kind of lonely. And because these zebras just dominate until they don't. So keep spreading the word. Hit the like button, comment, share it. I'm banned for life from Twitter because it's a zebra factory. And the reason zebra is the perfect metaphor is because the stripes, the only reason they're striped is because when they're in a group, the stripes make it so... Uh, no one can see an individual. That's why they're pack mentality. That's what the leftism is. And so if you mark one zebra, you make one an individual, that zebra will die because they have to hide behind conformity. They have to say, never call a woman a bitch or a cunt because those words are associated with 
with sexual crimes. And then Samantha B is like, Donald Trump's daughter's a cunt. And everyone's like, yes, yes, because we can't stand out. We believe in nothing. And hopefully these stripes will save us. But those stripes won't save you from us. They won't. Because I'll just keep marking you, marking you. Hey, Whitney Cummings, look at this. Look at Whitney Cummings' melted face. She looks like a melted candle. She poked me first. But guess what? I'll just mark you. Mark, mark, mark. And then people can see you and go, oh, that guy. Why do you think I got in so much trouble in L.A.? It wasn't necessarily that I was just against the concept of transgender children. I called out an individual with power and I said, you, sir, what the hell was that guy's name again? I always forget his name. Uh, Jesse Thorne, his son's five and they're dressing him up like a girl and they're going to give him hormone blockers. And I marked him. I said, Jesse Thorne, you, you're abusing your kid. And, and every zebra is terrified of being marked, mark, 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 right? And I'll do it all day long because I know that's how they go down. They have no backbone. They're terrified of that shit. And they want it. So what they do, the way that they try and hurt us is they mark us. They say, oh, Owen's a racist, bigot, homophobe. Ah, that marking doesn't work. You can mark me all you want. That isn't what takes out lions. That isn't what takes out lions. What takes out lions is a lack of food. And I got plenty of food, bitch. All right. Um, bring back the $2 bill. Thank you, Nick. To the family for mine. Thanks, Ms. Cunty Bear. Enjoy breakfast with the fam. Uh, fam. Thanks for the rent. Thanks, Coder Bear. And uh, register at uh, unbearablesapp.com. I'm out of here. Uh, say bye, to, the, say bye to, the, to, I don't know if I should say people or not. Come here, Walter. Come here. Say bye. Bye. Say bye, buddy. And you guys got to watch this little man grow up. Remember when he was just a baby and I was singing to him uh, Sound of Silence? Wave. <laughs> it's so great, right? It's so great. It's so great having you, buddy. We're going to learn a lot of fun skills. You know how we're going to learn archery. Are you hungry? Tuta. Tuta? Tuta. You want to listen? That, that means tequila, the song tequila. All right, much love.